My name is Jeff Cranston. Wayne Williams. My name is Casey Wilson. And I'm Amanda Tran. We've talked a lot tonight about new technologies and evolving technologies, but I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about human behavior in response to technology. We'd like to talk to you about cyber loafing and the cost of distraction. I have a short clip here that uh, might introduce us to the topic a little bit. What's always interested me about cyber loafing is it is an absolutely uniquely technological human behavior. Prior to the advent of modern technology and computers and these sorts of things, it used to be known by the term gold bricking. But gold bricking also carries with it quite a stigma of laziness and inactivity. What was interesting about cyber loafing is it's something that kind of creeped into our consciousness. It started very slowly, innocently. Someone, you know, making the uh, purchase on eBay at their lunch hour that, you know, maybe the auction didn't quite end at lunch. So then it started creeping into the afternoon. And these sorts of behaviors continued on and on and snowballed until what we have today, cyber loafing. I'm gonna pass it on here to Casey. Thank you. Okay, um, Jeff basically not to speak directly into the microphone. Jeff basically went over what the terms were. Um, I'll start with the second sub point. Um, with the use of proliferation of the with of the use of the internet for work, the opportunity for employees to engage the activity has grown at, has grown. The behavior goes by other names as cyber slacking, cyber bulging, and multi Shirk, multi-shirking when one engages in two or more non-activities at once.
Um, I researched what does it cost. There wasn't a lot on what it cost number-wise. Um, they just said whether it was good or bad for the company and more so if employees are wasting their money and they're not actually producing work for the company they're working for, they're just getting paid to sit there and look around on the internet and like the video showed, check bank accounts, shop, anything you can think of like that. Um, reasons for loss uh, for companies in cyber loafing is, like I said, they don't produce what the company is actually paying them for. Um, they can damage computers. We all know that computers, you look at the wrong website, you're going to get a virus, Trojans, cookies, anything you can think of like that. Um, and then it's a lot of people gamble online. People do, um, uh, I can't think, football, baseball, they all do the um, lineups on the internet like the video showed as well. This allows for gambling, gaming, people play video games all day, they check their Facebook, it's all a loss. Um, and the only really numbers we can, I could find was anywhere from $1 billion to $54 billion throughout the year for all companies combined. Well, there are several ways that an organization can prevent cyber loafing or we'll try to prevent it. They can ignore it. Ignoring the problem is never the right way to go about handling the situation. Because once like one employee says, okay, well, I'm going to check Facebook, I'm going to check Twitter. Next you know, everybody's on Facebook and Twitter. Then pro productivity drops and decreases. Next you know, the company's out of business. Um, next, you can trust your employees to act uh, appropriately. This may work if you actually trust your employees, but this will lead back to the company ignoring it and people using it more often. Next you know, the productivity decreases as well in this situation. Uh, the, the best situation would be to uh, you will uh, put different uh, securities and settings uh, on the computers, allow the uh, employees to do what they have to do on their own time, on their break, such as check Facebook and Twitter, which everybody has a smartphone nowadays, iPods and iPads, that gives them more time on their break to do it, and ban it. That's like the, the extreme route of taking it. Um, that's pretty much it. Oddly enough, there is some new research that suggests that allowing some access to cyber loafing actually improves productivity because it provides a segue between activities at work. It can help clear up writer's block. You know, and it's supposed to be a genuinely mentally stimulating behavior to be able to transition between activities in this fashion. Now I guess I could turn it over to the audience to ask what's your opinion on the matter? Cyber slacking, you said? Cyber slacking, cyber uh, loafing. Yes, any questions? How did you say it is more productive? You it gives them a little to revive them, you mean? Or well, the idea is that you can become fatigued after as little as 15 or 20 minutes engaged solely on one project. This provides you a way to break up that monotony. Okay. So. It may not be as unproductive as, as people think. It, it gives you pause to think about whether or not this behavior is good or bad. It, it's really more of a situational application. Depends. Depends on who your staff are, what your projects are. It is similar to what some businesses would do with a creation in the business place. I'm assuming you're referring to like Google's like uh, volunteering 20% of a person's time to devote to projects that, that, that you know, things, the result in things like Gmail and yeah, I, I think it runs along those same lines. It can be productive. Any questions or comments? Yes. Are you including illegal? Act Are you including illegal activities in this, uh, Are, uh, such as uh, porn or stuff like that? I'm sure or? that certainly results in lost productivity. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's a sample of that here on campus, so I was just curious. You know that. It I don't think it would help the employee get over like, his stress. <laughs> it was very hard to find a calculated dollar amount of loss because the way that it's calculated is so different from organization to organization to researcher to researcher. Do you include incidents where employees have been looking at porn or you just include, you know, where they're looking at eBay 
or do you look at losses that the company suffered as a result of transferring the liability for downloading illegal content like pirated movies and music to the company as opposed to the individual? Where do you draw the line? Well, shall we give them a hand, please?